Yeah, I'm just really excited that everybody's here tonight. I'm Drew Carter from the Office of Admission, and I'm um, delighted to welcome all of our viewers tonight from all across the globe. This is the fifth of our fall open house webinars. Um, in our previous webinars, we've answered uh, a few questions. The first was, what is the Montserrat first year experience? Um, then we answered how and when do Holy Cross students declare their majors? Um, how popular are internships and research opportunities? And finally, uh, last weekend, we answered the question, what do Holy Cross students do in their free time? The archived version for these webinars are all available on our website. Tonight's webinar uh, is gonna address um, an important question of uh, how do Holy Cross students prepare for life after Holy Cross? Um, tonight with us on the webinar, we have a lot of great um, speakers. Uh, we have Amy Murphy, who's the director of the Center for Career Development. And then we have five students joining us tonight, four who are representing the senior class. We have Elise Cobb, um, the pride of the wild boars at Short Rosemary Hall. We have um, Kate, who's also a current senior from Pell Memorial High School, the Pelicans. Um, Caitlin from Ashland High School, representing the Clockers. Abby Dresser is our last senior in the group from Hartford Magnet, Trinity College Academy, the Phoenix represented by Abby here today. And then our sole representative of the junior class is Carter Seitz from Perrysburg High School in Perrysburg, Ohio. They're the Yellow Jackets. Um, I'm really excited that you'll get to hear from all of them tonight. Um, just a quick note, um, I encourage you all to put questions in the Q&A box. Um, we'll be answering those as best we can, uh, both through text and through our speakers tonight. Um, we're also gonna be sending out several poll questions tonight. Um, you saw the first one already. Um, I'll also mention that uh, there's closed captioning available tonight, and you can activate that by clicking the CC button below. And I think um, we should uh, maybe launch our second poll question of the night. Did we launch that already? Here we go. We've had some great nicknames from for our panelists tonight, and um, I just we're curious about who you think has the best uh, mascot. Um, we got some interesting ones there. I'm not going to tell you my preference, but um, I like uh, I like some of our representatives here tonight. And um, unfortunately, panelists can't vote, so our speakers aren't able to vote tonight. But um, we're excited to see uh, who our who our attendees think have the coolest mascots tonight. And uh, once we're done with that poll, then I think we're going to ask um, Amy Murphy to give us a quick presentation, give us a little perspective on what the uh, Center for Career Development and some of um, uh, some of the ways in which they serve Holy Cross students and some of the services that they're able to offer. So let's um, wrap up this poll. We'll see the results. Drum roll, please. The Phoenix. Way to go, Abby. Okay, the Phoenix are the winners. And we won't mention who came in last there. Okay, all right. So Amy, if, if you would be so kind um, and uh, give us a, a quick um, 30,000 foot view over your office and the services you provide to Holy Cross students. You bet, thanks Drew. I'm just gonna share my screen here. I have a couple slides for everyone. All right. Great, so there we go. So I'm Amy Murphy. I'm the Director of Career Development here at Holy Cross. Um, I think, you know, where I want to start is um, the last eight months um, with COVID and a dramatic change in work um, and the way we imagine work and the way we are approaching work. Um, it's really shined a very bright light on um, for employers on the core skills that they need from entry level hires. Um, and employers are telling us they're moving away from, you know, it, the, the desire to hire for technical skills. They're saying we can train for technical skills. The core skills that have have risen to the top of critical need for employers um, are right in Holy Cross's wheelhouse. It's exactly what our students graduate with. Employers are looking for entry level hires who can solve problems, who are agile, who can pivot, who can look at problems um, or issues from multiple angles, who can communicate in a clear and concise and compelling way um, to multiple audiences, both in writing and verbally. And people who approach, again, problems, the work, 
um, through an anti-racist lens and with multicultural competency. At Holy Cross, regardless of major, um, it doesn't matter if a student is an econ major, a math major, bio, poli sci, French, they will develop those core skills that clearly every employer is seeking right now. What we do in career development um, is help students kind of put that together. So how do I understand um, the, the strengths and the core skills that I bring to the table and where do they connect with the world of work in a way that in, in a place that I want to be. So when students come to Holy Cross, they encounter really three, three core questions um, that we pose to them throughout their time at Holy Cross. And, and I can frame our approach to career development around these questions. So the first question students encounter at Holy Cross is who am I? And so from a career development perspective, we really start with, you know, who are you? What are your skills? What are your interests? What are your passions? What are your, goal, what are your goals? How do you want to spend your time? What would you rather keep in the rear view mirror a little bit? Um, and let's start there. And using our Jesuit tr tradition of reflection and discernment and working with students individually and in groups to really clarify um, those things for themselves. So really starting there. The second question that students encounter at Holy Cross is the question after who am I is who do I want to be? And that's where we challenge students to think about where their interests, passions, goals, strengths intersect with the world of work. So in career development, we provide vehicles and opportunities for students to explore. So that can be through doing informational interviews. We have a database of over 2000 Holy Cross alums who've raised their hand and said, yes, I want to talk to current students about my path, um, my journey, my job, my em uh, employer, my industry. Um, we do traditional job shadowing over our winter break and our summer break. Career Trek's bringing students to uh, employers where we have alumni to spend a half day exploring and understanding those places um, those industries, those employers, and then ultimately uh, moving toward more in-depth and substantive experiences like internships to gain experience. So students can um, try a career on, see if it resonates, if it fits, and either pivot um, and parlay it onto something else or continue down that road. Um, we, we believe very strongly and we see students come in um, really in one of three camps. A lot of students come to Holy Cross knowing exactly what they want to do after Holy Cross. Many students come to Holy Cross having absolutely no idea what they want to do after Holy Cross. And a whole lot of students come to Holy Cross thinking they want to do something and have an experience um, that turns it all around from them and opens up their eyes to new opportunities. We want to provide those opportunities for students to explore and get experience. One note on internships. So um, our complete data from the most recent or the most recent class we have complete data for is the class of 2019. 78% of those graduates did an internship while a student at Holy Cross. Um, we also distributed um, $406,000 to those students who to support in unpaid summer internships um, to offset that, that cost. Finally, the third question that students encounter while at Holy Cross is who do I wanna be for others? And for us in career development, that is then uh, connecting students with employers who are hiring for internships and jobs. So we do that through, we have a, a campaign, CHC, Crusaders Hiring Crusaders, where we put calls out to alumni um, to take on Holy Cross students as interns um, and post full-time jobs for our graduating seniors. We do an awful lot of networking receptions on campus right now. We're doing them virtually. Um, so it's a lot of Zoom networking happening um, and a lot of students reaching out to alumni who have volunteered to talk to students for, for networking. And ultimately, um, we, we collect data through the calendar year. So we're still collecting data on the class of 2020 um, on their first destination and their career outcomes. So our complete data set is for the, our most recent complete data set is for the class of 2019. Um, over two thirds of our students are employed in that first year after they graduate. Um, that's a very typical number for us. 
um, 14 percent going on to grad school um, and then students doing a year of service, post-grad internships and fellowships. Um, if you want to view our outcomes for the class of 2019 and previous classes, that link is at the bottom of this slide um, right on the college website. Um, outcomes after Holy Cross. You can view this full report and reports from previous classes, right? So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we'll kick it to questions. Thanks so much, Amy. Um, you bet. Uh, let's make this um, a little bit more real. Elise, can you um, talk us through what it was like um, when you got your internship last summer? How did you, how did you start? What did you do? What did you do? How did you get and what was it like? Sure. So I had an internship through Holy Cross uh, going into my junior year. I'm a senior now. And it kind of just started by poking around on Handshake, looking what I could find um, and trying to find somewhere in my area. And I ended up finding so an internship, which sounded perfect to me. It was in the Hartford area and I'm from Connecticut. I'm a few towns away. And I actually, so I submitted my resume and cover letter, everything through the uh, platform, through Holy Cross. And then once I was told that I made it to the next round and was going to have an internship, my internship was on campus, which was really helpful because I didn't have a car or any way to kind of get to Hartford if I needed to. So it was really nice that uh, both the my the organization I ended up interning for and Holy Cross were able to set it up so I was in, interviewing on campus and once that interview happened um, which was really exciting it was actually right next door to the career development offices uh, I found out pretty quickly that I got the internship which was really exciting it's a journey home a small nonprofit organization based in Hartford, Connecticut. It works to end homelessness in the greater Hartford area, which was really great uh, because like I said, I'm near, I'm from around Hartford and my family grew up actually, my dad grew up in Hartford. So it has a lot of meaning for me. And I actually was working in that realm of service through Holy Cross. So it just like was perfect for me. Uh, and I also was paid through Holy Cross, which was incredible because uh, that really did help me get that opportunity, which I might not have felt I, I could have accepted if I hadn't gotten the stipend through Holy Cross. So that was really amazing. And it was also just a great learning experience for me. I'd never had an internship or worked in an office or anything. So it was a really awesome stepping stone for me to be able to get my bearing and just kind of be a general intern in a small office. So I knew everyone and everyone knew me. It wasn't very intimidating to just kind of be a number. And uh, although it wasn't, uh, there was no Holy Cross alum working in that office. Uh, one of the people who supports that nonprofit is a Holy Cross alum. So that's kind of where the connection was made. And so that's also how I knew it was gonna be a good fit that I was gonna be around like-minded people and that I was gonna be learning a lot. Um, and so, yeah, it was a really great experience. And afterwards, like I still can be, am in contact with my supervisor and boss. And I know that like, I can always go back and volunteer with them again, if I want to, or if I need any kind of um, reference that they're there for me. So it was really an amazing experience. And again, one I would not have had if it weren't for career development and their, their help. That sounds great, at least. And one last little follow-up question. Were you nervous that, if you can get me back to that first day of that internship, what was that like? Were you nervous? Um, what were you feeling that, on that first day? I was definitely nervous just because it was completely brand new to me. But I honestly connected really well went on my interview with uh, both my supervisor and boss, two awesome women who were so welcoming to me. And they gave me a lot of uh, freedom and independence. So I wasn't micromanaged, which was really nice. And I think that's the best way for me to like learn and grow. So I knew I was like nervous riding the elevator up to my, to my uh, like office, but I was just, I had a little desk kind of in the middle of the room and everyone there was just so excited that I was gonna be there. Like I was the only intern for my office. So everyone was really welcoming. And so the butterflies quickly died away and it was, just kind of fun. I think my first day I 
was part of the um, office meeting. Like they had a meeting every month and I happened to come in on their first, the meeting of the month. So I was a little intimidated to like share a fun fact about me <laughs> myself, but uh, I think, you know, it ended up okay. Everyone was really welcoming there. That's great. Now, Carter, I know that you've had some interactions in, in the career development office. Can you tell me like, how did you, how did you know that that's a place you should go? How did you walk in there for the very first time? Um, like, I know where the office is, but as a student, how did you know what to do? Yeah, so during my first year at Holy Cross, I got to participate in a program uh, through the pre-business program and also career development called the Finance Bootcamp. And it was recommended through that process that we took our resumes into the career development center to get looked at. So my first interaction with career development was to get my resume looked at um, by a fellow student actually that was working in the office. And then from there, that's kind of when my interaction started becoming more frequent and now uh, I'm constantly going in for extra interview help and uh, to do mock interviews and things of that nature. But uh, during my first year, as I mentioned that finance boot camp, I was able to go onto Wall Street with a few other Holy Cross students and meet with alumni panels uh, at different investment banks on Wall Street. So um, as a first year student, I was able to be exposed to meeting other individuals, other alumni and start building connections, which was uh, which is one of my greatest experiences at Holy Cross so far. And being able to do that as a first year student was especially um, helpful. How about you, Abby? Have you, um, have you been to the career development office like um I, I think you brought your resume in for that review session what were those sessions like was that intimidating because i would think bringing your resume to somebody and say tell me how i can improve this that that seems a little intimidating to me yeah it was definitely intimidating the first time especially because i went kind of later into my holy cross career i went at the beginning of junior year when i was thinking about what i was doing after college I wasn't sure if I was going into a working field or if I wanted to continue with higher education. And when I went in the first time, I didn't even know what I should put on a resume. And when I went in, luckily for me, one of my friends was actually working within the Career Development Center. So I was able to be paired up with her and it was a really welcoming situation. And then when I went back a second time, I got to meet the other workers who are also there within the Career Development Center. And it was really easy to figure out what I needed to put on there, what I didn't need. And it was great to get some additional information as well. Like if you want to do this for research later on, it has to be a CV form and things like that. So it was a really good experience for me, even though it was intimidating at the beginning. And Caitlin, since we're on the topic of uh, internships, can you tell me about the internship you had in the medical field? Yeah, so I actually took part in the academic internship program, which is a chance at Holy Cross to receive academic credit for an internship um, during the academic semester. So a typical course load at Holy Cross is four classes, but you do have the chance during your junior or senior year to do an internship in the Worcester area. And uh, you receive credit for that. And you also get a chance to do a seminar and um, talk about the internship you're in with students who are in similar internships. So I did the healthcare policy internship um, and I got an opportunity to work at UMass Medical Center. So I applied into the program actually before I had an internship and that turned out to be really helpful because that was my introduction to career services. Um, in order to move forward after you get accepted into the program, you do have to go into career services and get your resume reviewed. So that was a huge benefit for me. Um, I got to meet a really awesome student who helped me out with my resume. And then we also had um, someone else who was involved with the academic internship program review our resumes. Um, and then after that, we kind of got a chance to talk with different alumni who were working in the field that we were interested in already. So I knew I wanted an internship in the healthcare field and I was interested in being a nurse practitioner. So I actually set up an in um, informational interview with a nurse practitioner um, through career services. And one of the questions that I had asked her was if she had any experience at Holy Cross that she felt really prepared her for um, life after graduation. And she talked about working for a specific doctor at UMass Medical Center um, that really had an influence um, over her time at Holy Cross. 
So I actually looked it up after our interview. He was still working there. And I contacted her afterwards and said, um, would you be comfortable with this if I reach out to this doctor and see if um, he's still taking students because you had such a positive experience. And she was happy to recommend me and to reach out to him. Um, so we kind of just moved forward from there. So um, I worked for the Chief of Pediatric Surgery at UMass Medical Center. And he was also the medical director for the Worcester Department of Public Health. So I got an opportunity to really see two different sides of the healthcare field. Um, on one hand, I got to meet all his patients. I got to observe operations, which was really exciting and a new experience for me. And I also got to work um, on the public health side of things and view um, meetings at the Worcester Department of Public Health and also take place in a lot of take part in a lot of um, public health advocacy groups throughout the semester. Um, and all of those really related well to the seminar that I was taking as well. Um, in my seminar, we had students who were working for doctors, for PAs, nurse practitioners, dentists, orthodontists. And we spent a lot of time all talking about what we were learning. So for me, that internship was really a great opportunity to kind of um, sample the different healthcare fields and see where I feel that I might fit in. So Amy, we've heard a little bit about students bringing their resume in to your office um, for help on that, but we also heard Elise talk about uh, having an interview for her internship. Can you talk a little bit about what your office does to help prepare Holy Cross students for interviews, whether they're for internships or job placement? Sure. So there are a few things that we do, and you know, there's this whole piece of career development, the skill building piece, right? That how do I write a resume? How do I network? How do I have these conversations? And how do I interview? So we do weekly workshops um, in the afternoon um, on a topic, whether that's resume writing, interview skills, or networking. Um, students can come and just get that content in a small group format it's right in, in our office. Um, we also have asynchronous, we have recorded workshops as well, the CCD on demand. So students also, if they are prepping for their interview, you know, maybe the night before, maybe at midnight or one in the morning, they can view those videos online and prep. We also offer mock interviews um, by, um, by appointment. And when students um, have an interview scheduled, they contact our office and say, I have an interview with a bank or with an advertising agency or with a hospital, um, with a lawyer's office, whatever it may be. And then we will um, do a mock interview for that industry. So we will, the, the questions um, will be targeted um, for that, that industry. We then do the interview for about 30 minutes um, and then spend 30 minutes debriefing with the student. More of this, less of that. Um, some of just checking the how you present, how you speak, but also digging into the content of, of um, the student's answers. We have a, we're also able to simulate the format of the interview. So if it's a face-to-face -face interview, um, we can do that interview face-to-face -face in one of our interview rooms to simulate that. If it's a phone interview, we have the students come into the office and have them sit in a different office and call them on the phone even though we're just one room apart so they can practice what it's like doing um, that interview over the phone. Or now if it's a video interview, we have a platform um, that's cloud-based that students can log in. We have question sets in there that students can, can answer per industry. And then we will debrief their video recording um, with them. And they actually have that, that video recording that they can watch over and over. Um, to, to critique themselves. That sounds pretty um, specific and pretty thorough. <laughs> now, Abby, you may not remember this, but um, when you were a senior in high school, I emailed you when reading your application because uh, in your application, you'd expressed perhaps an interest in maybe studying economics. And I asked you a question about where that interest came from. Now, we're fast forward, this is four years later now. Um, so much has changed in the world, like you've changed in a lot of different ways. Can you just tell me, I don't know, how your thoughts have developed about what you might wanna do after graduation? Um, you know, like what you thought you wanted to do when you were in high school and how that might've changed now that you're in college and studying and, and having all these experiences? I think when I was in high school, I was debating about what I believed I would be the best in. And I thought, well, I'm good at math. 
and business has math in it. So perhaps I'll do business. And I think that was the basic root, like ground level of what I thought that I wanted to do. And then as I started going into college, I took a bunch of econ classes. I took an accounting course and I just found that it didn't excite me to keep on continuing with it. I enjoyed the 101 classes because I met a lot of new people. I gained some new skills and education on things that I had not known in the past. But as I continued on, I got a little bit more into the humanities courses and as well as the volunteer opportunities I was able to do during my first two years at Holy Cross really set the groundwork for what I thought that I would enjoy the most. And I loved being a part of community-based learning in Worcester. I really liked being able to speak Spanish and English in my classes. And I really wanted to continue doing that. And as I got into the major I'm in now, which is political science, it was a way that I could combine both volunteer as well as my interest in Spanish into a career that would suit me. And then as I went into my department and I was going through the different professors, a lot of them were concerned about like the well-being of other humans and how law affects those as well. And that was something that I was very passionate about. And I had always been into politics, but I ne never really thought how I could work within the field of politics. Of course, I would listen to NPR and different podcasts, but I didn't think I could be a part of that in any way. And so this year has been really about solidifying that I wanted to go to law school. And I tried research and I really do enjoy it, but I think what I love about law school and what I want to do now, especially finishing my LSATs and going through the application process right now, I found that I'm definitely in the career that I wanted to be in. I think I needed to go through the trial and error of thinking that I wanted to do econ in the beginning of my freshman and sophomore year. Um, so at least I want to ask you about your internship, but before, um, Amy, I have a very quick question for you. Um, are Holy Cross alums um, able to work with your office, maybe after graduating from uh, grad school or something like that? Like, do you work with, I'm sure you work with current students, but do you work with mm -hmm. as well? Yeah, so we, um, there's sort of two, two lanes that we take. The Center for Career Development focuses primarily on, on entry-level employment. So we work with students in their first five years um, after graduation. Um, after that, we, in the alumni office, have a director of alumni career development who she takes that piece on, um, you know, working with, with the more experienced and mid and senior level alumni. That's great. Okay, Elise, um, take me back to that internship. Um, I know it's one thing to get an internship. It's another thing to feel like you're prepared or able to sort of fulfill the, um, the responsibilities of that internship. Did you feel like um, you were prepared? Did you feel a little bit like a fish out of water? Did you feel like a college kid working in, a, in the grown up world or what, what did it feel? I think, yes, I felt like a college kid working in the grown up world, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, I mean, it was definitely new to me, but also I did feel prepared in the sense that I knew my writing skills were strong because of my Montserrat. And then I had also taken a lit class and then also my critical thinking and research, which I had to do as small parts of my internship were also solid. So I felt I had a good base in the academic sense, and then it was more learning about kind of the tricks of the trade within the nonprofit I worked for. Um, and that was fun for me. So parts of the job I did was working on like social media and things like that, which was which is always just kind of fun to do. And that's where it was almost a benefit that I was the college kid because, you know, that's where you almost have the upper hand on um, the, the adults. Um, so that was really exciting for me and I kind of got to discover if that's something I would want to go into further. Um, but then also another area that I worked in was uh, there was a furniture donation program. So we would pick up furniture from people who no longer needed it or were moving or downsizing, whatever it may be. And then we would deliver it to people who just got homes who were recently homeless. Uh, so that was also kind of a really interactive part of my internship that was amazing and 
super eye-opening and a little bit of heavy lifting. I, I carried a, quite a few couches, um, but it was, it was really fun. So there's no real way to, I think, prepare for that. I mean, I, I'm on the women's soccer team. So yeah, I'm, I, was, I was physically fit enough, I suppose, but to see people um, who were newly housed I think I wasn't prepared for that, but I don't think there is a good way to be. But as far as the office work, I did feel I had a good, a sturdy base, um, but it was a learning experience also. And the, my supervisor knew that and was excited to teach me a lot of things. So yes and no in all the good ways. <laughs> so Carter, I've, I've um, heard a lot about the finance boot camp, but I don't know that I've actually heard a student talk about it. I've read about it on the website. Um, and I've heard some, some faculty members talk about it, but can you talk about what that experience was like being a part of the finance boot camp? Yeah, yeah of course. So it's a four day event where two, the first two days are typically spent at Holy Cross and different alumni come in and speak with you and they're really preparing you to be in front of different alumni that are on Wall Street and in the investment banking roles. So you get to learn a lot about the industry in the first two days. And then the second two days, you actually get to go to New York City, stay in a hotel overnight, and get to visit the different investment banks and uh, Holy Cross alumni that work at those different banks. And um, during those ses sessions, they're telling you a little bit about each of their different firms, but also you're really getting to ask uh, the questions you have about their roles. And uh, personally, coming from Ohio, being a first gen student, I really I knew I was interested in finance, but I wasn't really sure what was out there. So it was uh, just being able to engage with alumni and doing this as a first year too, it really helped me become comfortable talking with alumni in general and people in the industry. So, um, so then going forward, I have been able to connect and really figure out what I want in my future career path and uh, which is to solve problems and work in a collaborative atmosphere. And I would say all Holy Cross students are really well prepared to do exactly that but it's uh, being able to talk with alumni. Uh, that's the biggest advantage of this program in general. Caitlin, can you just help me visualize you? You talked about this um, incredible opportunity you had with your internship with that doctor. Like, what did you do? Can you just like paint me a picture? I, like, what does that mean to have an internship with a doctor? I have no idea what that means. Yeah, so um, Basically how we did it was week by week. So I was pretty much um, this doctor's right-hand man. That's what he liked to call me. I just was his little shadow, followed him around everywhere he went. Um, sometimes that meant working directly with patients, um, coming right into the operating room. I actually stood um, shoulder to shoulder with him and watched him do operations, which was a crazy experience for me and not necessarily what I was expecting. Um, I didn't even know that was like allowed, but um, that was an incredible experience. Um, so we would talk um, every Sunday night, he would kind of lay out his whole schedule for me. And I worked around my other three classes. And besides my other three classes, I spent every second I possibly could at the hospital. Um, so a lot of students choose to do full days twice a week in this internship program. But because his schedule varied so much, it was tough to say, oh, I'm just going to work on Thursdays. So luckily enough, I had a car on campus and I was able to go almost every day um, and really work around my classes, work around my homework as best I could. But that was my top priority. So sometimes that meant staying at the hospital until really late at night. Um, every Friday, I woke up at 5 a.m. to do clinical rounds with him, which was one of my favorite parts. We got to... Um, meet all his pediatric, pediatric patients. Um, and I also got a chance to work with all sorts of different people. Some of my favorite parts of the internship were actually interacting with the medical students at UMass Medical School. So um, one thing that he does is teach a clinical clerkship. So the med students had two weeks off from their regular curriculum and they had a chance to take an optional elective course. And the doctor that I was working for actually was teaching one of those elective courses so I got the chance to actually take this elective course with the medical students, which was incredible. I got to um, see them interact, see how they learn and how um, the doctor I was working for really used a lot of his experiences to translate into teaching new medical students. And then at the end of those clerkships, we had a whole um, presentation day 
where all the um, different clerkships presented about their experiences. So similar to the internship, I got a lot of firsthand experience from the public health clerkship that I did with the doctor I was working with, but I also got to learn a lot about um, all the other medical students clerkships. And then as far as the public health side of things, um, he was the medical director for the Worcester Department of Public Health. So that meant biweekly um, DPH meetings in town hall. So I also got to uh, see a political side of things that I didn't necessarily expect either from an internship in a hospital. And that was something that I wasn't really seeking out and something that I'm now planning on pursuing. Um, after experiences like that, I kind of found a new passion for public health that I didn't know I had. And um, one thing that I took part in that was uh, really influential for me was a annual gum buyback day that the doctor actually um, runs. So he does all this in addition to being uh, the chief of pediatric surgery, trauma surgeon in call. So as you can imagine, I really had a crazy schedule this semester. Um, so it's a tough question to answer to just say, what did I do? Because I had so many diverse experiences, but um, this one singular day was kind of the capstone of the internship. It was right at the end of the semester and something we had been working towards um, throughout the semester. Um, we did a fundraiser in Worcester at local police stations and all around central Massachusetts. Um, and that gave us a chance to um, work with police officers in central Massachusetts as well. And we collected guns that um, people didn't want in their homes anymore and gave them gift cards in return. So that was kind of a way that the doctor taught me that um, being in a position of power or a position of responsibility, um, having education actually gives you an opportunity to engage in public health as well. And that was a huge takeaway of the internship for me too. It sounds like an, an amazing experience to see just the breadth of opportunities and involvement uh, with this doctor. Um, Abby, I want to hear a little bit about your um, position as a research assistant with the professor. What does that mean to be a research assistant? What, what does a research assistant do? Um, how do you assist research? Um, can you tell me what that's like? Yeah, of course. Um, I think research assistants, what they do specifically varies from professor and what department they're a part of. But I did research with a professor that I had for my freshman seminar. Montserrat and I had known her from freshman year and we had stayed in contact. And then when this project came up and she asked for fresh or she asked for research assistance, she emailed me and I was more than happy to be a part of it. So she is part of the Spanish department and her project is called Synagogia. It's an online database for Latin American films. And one of my jobs as her research assistant was to do the film database. So basically there was a backlog of films that were uploaded to the site that professors are able to see and other students are able to access as well that are in Spanish, English, and Portuguese. And one of my jobs was to translate the synopsis of the films that we got from the film database and translate them from Spanish to English or vice versa. And then I was able to have my translations uh, pub published onto the website as well. And now that I have continued this research into my fall semester as well, now I am working on a specific project that is about indigenous representation within Latin American films. They are a group that's not very representative in Latin American society. And we believe that it's a really important part of Latin American history. And also a good way to broadcast the issues that they are dealing with in a modern world and still trying to maintain their own identities. So I also get to see and hear a bunch of languages that I've never heard before, including Quechuan from Peru and other places like that. So it's been a really interesting and constantly changing process. But I think what Holy Cross has done really well has helped me adapt to the changes within my research. That sounds really awesome. Um, Amy, we get so many questions from prospective students and their families about like, where are our students doing internships? What are, what employers are, you know, going after our students? They're, they're trying to get a sense of like, um, of how our students are engaged. Uh, what information can they see through your website 
as far as what opportunities are available for our students and, and what services, can, are they able to see that through your website? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there are two places where um, families can look. One is on the Center for Career Development website um, that does highlight services and resources, <clears throat> excuse me, that are available to students and how they can access us, um, both kind of in normal times and um, right now where <clears throat> our operations are, are a little bit different. So we're really clear about that on the site and families can see exactly how we engage students. To um, understand where our graduates go immediately after Holy Cross, the outcomes after Holy Cross site, um, those, those outcomes reports show the uh, different graduate programs um, and the different industries and employers that our seniors go to in that first year um, after they graduate. And I think what you see is, you know, the number one industry for Holy Cross, the number one and number two, kind of they jockey between one and two every year, it's between financial services and healthcare. Um, and so those top employers for Holy Cross are the, um, in financial services, the Bank of America, JP Morgan, Fidelity, um, Wellington Management. Um, we've got some alums there who like to hire a lot of, of Holy Cross students. Um, and then in the healthcare space, um, it's a lot of the hospitals in Boston, Brigham and Women's, um, Mass General, Dana-Farber. Those are kind of our, our top two industries. Then from there, our number three industry that students are hired into, our third most popular industry is the tech sector. Um, and um, Dell EMC is a big employer of Holy Cross students, as is Oracle NetSuite. Um, and then, of course, the accounting firms um, who gobble up all of our accounting majors, um, you know, try to compete with each other to get them. And a uh, quick follow-up question. We've heard a lot of, from our students tonight about internship opportunities they've had. When are Holy Cross students um, able to begin um, looking at internships and participating in uh, the internships run through your office? Sure, sure. So at any time, um, so all of our, as soon as they um, start their first year, what we, tell students, you know, if you're applying for internships, competing for internships, you're competing against the juniors um, and, and who have more experience. So it is hard to land an internship as a first year student, not impossible, but it's challenging. Um, but those internships are available to you. So um, I think it was Elise had, had referenced Handshake. That is our job and internship portal. All students have an account. Um, when they enroll at the college and they can access that account um, as soon as um, they start their first year and they can search for jobs and internships in that portal and apply. For summer funding, um, that is available to rising juniors and rising seniors. So first year students don't have access to that summer funding. Um, you, you get that access during your sophomore year for that following summer or junior year for that following summer. This is my uh, my last question for the night, and um, I want to unfortunately join the list of, of um, people who are asking our seniors, in particular at least, um, what they want to do after graduation, um, and with no particular expectation for a for a, a clear, finite answer. I guess I, I don't. I'm not going to ask you what you want to do after graduation. I guess I want to ask you how you are um, how your thinking has changed and developed over your time. And, and where that's brought you to right now. That's, a, um, I think, a better way to ask that question and a, and a more a gentler way to ask that. Hopefully, question. yeah. I'm, I'm unfortunately used to this dreaded question, being a senior now. Um, but right now, I'm kind of in the process of searching for jobs, again, using Handshake and everything. Um, and I'm not really sure what I want to do. I'm a psychology and political science double major and which I really like to be able to kind of take a range of classes and I'm sort of now seeing what I've learned come together uh, and connect with one another, which has been really exciting. But because I've kind of taken varied classes, I'm interested in pursuing kind of a lot of different careers, which can be intimidating sometimes to think, well, what if I wanna do this? Or what if I don't like this? What if I do like this? Um, so I think that's kind of how my thinking has changed in the sense of 
it's okay to have a lot of ideas and it's okay to not be sure. I'm allowed to try different things out and decide, no, I don't like that. I'm going to switch it up. Um, and if I do find something I like, it's okay to kind of dive deeper into that. Um, so I've thought about, like I said, I'm searching right now, I'm looking into more HR recruiting, but I'm also interested in the like politics side of maybe working on a campaign um, or at a nonprofit and maybe eventually going back to school to kind of get a higher degree uh, in something more specific. I thought about, do I want to go to grad school right away? And then I was like, again, there are too many things I'm interested in. I don't, I wouldn't know what to kind of narrow in on. Uh, so I think that's, again, the biggest thing I've learned is that it's okay to keep my options open. And it's kind of a benefit of Holy Cross is that you do try a lot of different things out and you become a more well-rounded person and in a, the sense of academics, but also just in the sense of like your worldview and um, what your general interests are. Uh, so I think I'm slowly getting closer to knowing what I want to be when I grow up, but I'm also trying not to put too much pressure on myself um, for the definite answers either. And Amy, uh, super quick last question of the night. Before I ask you, we're going to launch our last poll question of the night. Um, uh, and so while we launch that poll question, Amy, if you could just talk about how you're working, how your office is working with Holy Cross students in this, uh, in this current cycle over the last six months, obviously with students not being on campus in the numbers that they have been before, how have you been working with Holy Cross students now? Sure. Do you want me to answer right now? Do you want to wait for that poll to come in? Okay. Um, right, so Zoom, 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 Zoom. Um, and it, it's interesting because we have so many juniors um, who study abroad and are in or stud doing an internship in New York or an internship in Washington, DC during the academic year. In career development, we were set up to work with students remotely already because we were working with all of these juniors who were doing a study abroad year, New York or the DC internship programs. So students can, when we were in person and remote, students schedule their appointments in Handshake. Um, so they log in, they can see calendars that walks you through the types, you know, do you want a resume critique? Do you want career counseling? Do you want industry specific advising? And then it'll show you available internship or uh, appointment slots. You click it, done. We send you a, a Zoom link right now. If you prefer to do it over phone, instead of being on camera, again, we can do that also. Um, and then we take it from there. We're doing uh, workshops, we're doing alumni panels for specific industries or academic departments. We just had an environmental studies alumni panel a couple of weeks ago on Zoom, which is great now because we can pull in alumni from all over the country and all over the world instead of people who can drive to campus. We did an English major um, uh, alumni uh, career panel two weeks ago, the same thing. Um, so we're, we've just moved everything like everybody else onto Zoom. That's great to hear, thanks so much. Um, and a big thanks to all of our panelists tonight. Um, it's been great to hear about uh, your journeys, even when I put you a little bit on the hot seat. It's been great to sort of visualize your experience with, with internships. Uh, thanks to all of our attendees. Um, be sure to check out the archived version of our other webinars. Also be sure to check out our last webinar, which will be next weekend. Um, I hope everybody has a great week uh, at school this week. I hope everybody stays happy and stays healthy. And thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. <laughs>